what's up guys welcome back to my channel today video we'll continue the series part of our physics fundamentals inside of blender but this time we are going to look into the dynamic paint and particle system in this tutorial i will show you how to drive a mask from the dynamic paint and generate a displacement from that and also to generate a particles from it so let's go ahead and let's get started so first thing you have to do now is to create a simple scene which i don't need the lamp and the camera for now you can get rid of that then you can bring back back into the scene if we need that so let me just add the simple scene here x y So what I have to do to this is to just animate it with a rigid body. So I will just first want to animate this. I will turn on this record, auto record to start, and then I will start the animation from frame ten. Okay, I will just do this now to the frame thirty. I will just drag it to the scene. So I will just rotate it randomly. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. This is better for me. So when you play this, we have something like this. So we want the rigid body to start from something like here, 28. So let's go to the rigid body, the faces. Now we turn on the rigid body. After I enable this, so we have to set this also to rigid body. And make sure we have this as passive as usual. But this active, we have to turn on, on the animation. So when we play this, you have the animation so we have to start to key the animation from here just click here you have to key it by doing this so i have the keyframe to that let's go to frame 28 let's start from 27 here then turn off the animation and this is keyframe already okay so when you play this you have something like this you can see that it's slide off so you can do that by adjusting the friction so let's go to the surface respond there then we can increase the friction so let's not give it to only one percent so let's play it again you can see what it does this is better for me so we can just go ahead and do the dynamic first thing i would like to show you how we go to do is to bake this so let's turn off this we don't need it so go to the object now go to the rigid body then click on bake to keyframe so this is baked as a keyframe. When you play this, you have this baked as a keyframe already. So for the timeline, you can just use to 150 because we don't need something that much long. Okay. So when this is baked, now we can just make sure we don't set rigid body on this. Just cancel it. So everything will be working normal because it is baked. You can see it's still working normal. So make sure you bake this before you set your dynamic paint. And for this plane here, we have to set this as canvas. But before we do that, we have to subdivide this multiple times. Just press tab, press A, then W, then subdivide. Now you can set this subdivision to something like 30. Let me just put it to 40 because we need more face to generate from this. Okay. So let me put 50. Oh. Okay, this is big enough for me and okay so now let's click on the dynamic paint this is the canvas for sure let's add the canvas to this and by this click on this then dynamic paint now this will not be the canvas instead of that it should be the brush now click here now set this to brush then add so for this you can have this is the color we have in this so you can just leave this the brush but the canvas you have to do some things so let's click on this vertex we are using vertex for this and anti-analysis so we are doing paint but when you change it to displace you have something like this you might not see it properly but we are having some kind of displacements going on so before you if you want to see that properly you can just increase to five let's play that can see that you are seeing something like displacing on this. So 
that is that so we can just give it to something like 20 we have more displays on that you can see so because we don't subdivide this multiple and so we can just use subdivision surface modifier to drive more subdivision on this so let's go ahead and add a subdivision modifier to this so this subdivision will be before the dynamic pane so let's drag this up and that is exactly what i will do so when you play this now you, see, you can see that we have more scratch on the floor and we can just give it a subdivision of two okay now you can see that we have something interesting in the same okay so that is that about displacement so what i want to show you is the paint itself let's check out the paint and let's see how it works okay let's go to the physics and change this from displacement to paint okay now we can we have the dry because we don't want this to dry off just turn off the dry so in this effect we have spread we have shrink we have everything here both let's wait that's for now and let's check on output so we have the width paint width map output layer so we have to turn on just this plus to add the width pan output so when you just check here in this vertex color we have this in this vertex color so in this vertex color when you just go to the shading now for this ground let's turn on let's have a layer which is our material so when you just click shift e go to input now select a vertex color also so just click on it then you have your paint map so when you just drag it to the surface this is what you get and let's play this because remember that we are choosing blue for our paint color so when you play this this is exactly what you are going to get you are going to get the blue but we are not getting anything here because we are in 3d so when you go to the preview we have it you can see exactly what is going on and you can change this color to red or any color you like so it's the same if you paint the color exactly the way you do it and this is all about with me but there's more to this than just getting color out of this and just doing displacement but even the displacement I will show you the better way of how I will do the displace so let me just show you that right now okay now let's go back to the shading let's turn off this back so we can just leave that okay now to get a proper displacement so what we are going to do is to use in this weight map just change it to instead of changing it to displace already now we set it to weight and this weight we have a weight map on this now when you to have the weight just turn click on the plus so let's go to the vertex weight so in this we have already have the vertex group for the vertex weight so for this now we can use this as a displacement so let's go to the modifier here now we can add a displacement modifier so we just click here to add a new displacement modifier now click here let's change a texture for this this image now we choose cloud texture for this okay this cloud you can just give you some random settings so this is okay so when you go back to the modifier now we can use this as the vertex group as a factor so click here to add the weight group so this is exactly what we get let me play this for you back to see what is going on in the same you can see the way it does it to break it up so we, want, we don't want it to just break it up like this we want it to be inverted towards down so we can do that so we don't even want so much strength on this we can just reduce the noise the strength of this and dive it back inside can see the way I drive it inside. So when you play this again, you can see that it's been drive backward, and this is okay. So you can just drive it more backward, but I think we leave it the default way we are doing it to be more better. And let's drive it. Okay, so this is better. So when you play this now. 
okay now we get this now can't do that this is looking nice and we can just drive particles from this also so i'll show you the best way of doing this so to do this we have to duplicate this ground plane so click on it then press shd to duplicate it slap it back so for this instead of using the displacement we are not using displacement instead of that we are using the mask node so that will show you the way you use the mask just let's get rid of this now click there then select yes this is the mask so we have the mask now what i'm going to do is to mask all this the creators group using the mask we got so add it to mask you can see where the insert is so let me play this you will see exactly what it does you can see anywhere it touches to create a mask for that you can see so we can generate particle system from this mask so now we can go to the particle system then add a new particle system on the mask so when you play this this is what you get using the particle system for the mask you can see that it's not really working fine right now you can see what is going on underground so what you have to do is go to the source now choose the face stack modifier so now we have the face stack so when you play this again You can see that the particle is being emitted from the faces so that is better so what we are going to do is to make sure we set this as a collision object so that the particle system can see something to collide with so let's go back to the faces now let's start the collision object okay and this let's leave it by default for now we still go to uh -huh. these settings okay so let's go back to that let's go back to the particles so for this, let's play it once again to see how it works out. Now they can see that the particle is not falling anymore and that is better. So what we are going to do is to animate this and set some settings on this so that it can flip up like the way we want it. So let's check the velocity of this and let's give it a number of 2. So, and this Z of this angle, so we just put that also to 2. So, by doing that, let's go to the modifier and then decrease the subdivision. We can just get rid of the subdivision instead of just, I can just give it to 1. So, so that it will be less heavy on our viewport. You can see the way the particles flee up. And this is exactly what I was looking for. So for this, let's add a sub sub solidify modifier to this. Okay. Now you can just drag this up before the collection so that it will be more thick. So let's play this once again. So this is not really doing better right now so we can just make sure we have better things on this okay so we can just give it a target of two also so that it will spread and let's go to the rotation give it the rotation rotation so for this object velocity now I'll give you some object velocity and randomize should be minimum so when you play this we see that we have a better result than this You can see the way the particles spread out now. You can see that it's really better the way you do it. So the particles should start from somewhere like, let me just choose the frame for this. You start emitting from 40, start frame should be 40 frame. And the lifetime should be 200. Let's choose 200. Okay. Hmm? So you can see that this is really working fine now so if you don't want to see this in the middle from the particles that is emitting we can just set the frame to exactly where it starts doing that so from here we can set the frame to 50 starting frame to 50. so when you play this you see that it won't emit until it starts touching as it starts sliding You 
okay you can see that this is really working fine so you can increase the particle system right now to 20 2000 rather or 20,000 something you want so that it may be fine okay guys now we can just view it for the last time so let's play it now to see exactly what we got so as you can see that we have our displays which break this ground you can see and we also have the particles emit from it so this is exactly how to do something like this but in the next part of this tutorial i'm going to show you more about this particle system and how to make something cool out of it so for this for now this is the end of this video i hope you like it and if you want this project file the link will be in the description so if you are my patron you'll get this project file for free so support my patreon to get most of my project files and for this this is the end of the video thanks for watching guys and i will see you guys in my next one